Ramble. Thank you to Noom, Third Love, and Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. Oh, watch out for that guilty pleasure. The podcast of love, what it loves. <laughs> Ah. Each week we talk about one of our favorite guilty movie pleasures and TV shows. Oh. Today we're going to be joined by our good buddy Chris Reinecker to talk about Brendan Fraser's George of the Jungle. I'm Zach Kornfeld, joined by Garrick Bernard and Kelsey Dara. Hey friends, what's happening? I love Chris. We, he's a buddy of all of ours for very, very many years. I think he's very funny yep. and I think he knows cinema. I'm just yep. kidding. We he, love knows, <laughs> he knows cinema. He knows, he knows cinema. how to talk he knows cinema. C- cinematography. All yes. of the words. I feel like at BuzzFeed, we would just always be shooting a scene and then we'd be having a side conversation about a show or TV or movie or something like that. Like, I just yeah. trust his yeah. opinions. Um, I have thoughts, but I will save them. Rick, how are you feeling? How are you I'm feeling? Karen? Good. Uh, my neck is good. I Ooh, mean, nice. I'm, I, That's I, a plus. I got my car fixed. We're, Ooh, we're, another we're in, plus. Yeah. We're in good the spirits. only two things you care about. <laughs> yeah, my neck and my vehicles. Yep. Here's one thing I'm very excited about today is uh, Kelsey is very tired, which is rare. I, very I rare. <laughs> took a nap on a couch. That never happens. I don't know why I'm Here. so yeah. exhausted. Yeah. Chris, when he joins us, he's uh, coming off his second uh, COVID vaccine, which makes you sleepy. So you're yeah. going to get high energy Garrick today. Really yeah, hold yeah. him Garrick. down. The yeah. I'm fucking, Come on, Garrick. I'm fucking jacked. I'm, I'm to the moon right now. <laughs> Dogecoin <laughs> went up. We're we're in there, baby. I'm I'm pretty. I'm I'm not probably high energy, but I'm a, a, a higher level He's than usual. Juiced. So wow, Rick's yelling. Oh, I was took like I took hella spring. Yeah, I took hella fucking uh, steroids, so I'm juice, baby. Was <laughs> next no. feeling good? I don't HGH, baby. No, oh, kidding. that's not a drug. Okay. But real, real quick uh, follow up before we get into things. Last week, if you're watching on YouTube, you may notice, Zach, why do you have a random ass blanket hung behind you? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm in an empty room because I moved and I it's going to take the me a long house. time to decorate this. It's echoing yeah. as fuck in here. Yeah. So I'm just flex on the, just, flex on the guilty bought, whores. Say I bought a house. I, I bought, bought it. There it is. Thank Matt Damon you. bought a zoo. I bought a house. You love it. But uh, it's echoing as fuck in here. So you're going to get to see how long it takes me to decorate this office uh yeah. over under two months no not with my help it'll be done in two days um well you're I'm in gonna, new york kelsey yeah yeah that's a good point i'm gonna make a bet and say two years two years <laughs> <laughs> and i'm two days we'll meet in the middle let's start a pinterest board yeah. baby Joining us today, our good buddy. You know him from the Wine and Weed podcast. Oh, you may yeah. know him from videos that we used to make together. He's a chicken lover and mm-hmm. a lover. Lover. Please welcome <laughs> to the podcast, Chris Reinecker. Chris. Hell Hi. yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. I House. thought you were in front of the Declaration of Independence. It kind of uh, looks like that. Scrotum me? Yeah, it could oh, t- you could totally be in front of a giant scrotum. Yeah. Okay. A little scrotum me. Okay. Kelsey looks like she's in some murder den. Yeah, she's in a murder den and yeah. she has like a shadow cast behind her and I'm watching it. <laughs> I'm watching it to see if it moves because I'm like, N- that'll be the end of this podcast. I'll be like, I'm good. I'm, you You'll finally get to see my like shit. other personality. It right, like turns yeah. the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. Or like the head Terrifying. starts spinning or some shit. It's like, oh, no, yikes. No, she lets no. her hair down. I'm sorry. Yeah. Everyone's it, Everyone but you, Garrick, is in some sort of like fuckery position. So you're really going to have to carry this. Yeah, I I got you. Yeah, I, got I you. feel also like your I shadow. just got hit by a tree. <laughs> hey, that's good. Hey, uh, <laughs> Chris, that's my George what of the is... Jungle joke. That's my George of the Jungle material. What does the movie, Chris, that you have brought us today to discuss on this fine, revered podcast? Oh, my God. We're talking about George of the Jungle, uh, uh, a 1996. We're not doing Curious George? <laughs> Get out of this podcast room. <laughs> Kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I thought it was jungle to jungle, to be honest. I thought it was jungle to jungle too, and I got really it excited. It has jungle to jungle elements, for it sure. It does. Yeah. It has jungle yeah. I, elements. We're, we're, let's just talk about it now. I don't know the difference between the two movies, and I am convinced that they're <laughs> one and the same. Um, adults and children. Uh, jungle to jungle, it's a kid. Uh, Arguable. Jungle, it's an adult. Arguable. 
both Disney. I mean, they're they're all not raised properly, so yeah, be <laughs> childlike, sure. Yeah. It was a big it was a big year for jungle hype. You it know, was in the 90s, we were all pumped about the jungle. There was um King Kong, Mighty Mighty Joe Young, um this Mighty movie, Joe Young. and then Jungle to Jungle. By the way, this was also a Disney release two years before Tarzan. So they were fucking loving Fuck. jungle movies all up in yeah. that shit. You know what but was probably we, happening? They were probably going downhill on the Disney Jungle Cruise and they needed, they spent so much yeah. money on the Jungle Cruise, they oh, needed some new jungle new IP elements. to Chris. get That's people smart. back to the cruise. Speaking of Brilliant. the Disney Jungle Cruise, I'm not gonna deter too, too hard, but I have to say, this is so funny that Chris and I tried to do a podcast once a few years ago, and it was called All Over the Place, where we went to unique cities around America and found the most interesting stories inside of the town that represented the people. And we accidentally stumbled into a town where we were talking to a historian, and he told us that Weird Al wrote the song Jungle Cruise or whatever the fuck it was called about the Disney Jungle Cruise. That song is about him because he was the Jungle Cruise tour guide. Yeah. Wow. So he had a, if you didn't follow that, he had a few important things. One of them <laughs> was that he used to be a Jungle Cruise tour guide, and now he works in the city of Solvang, which is very Disney. Yeah. And uh-huh. not only that, but he was like the famous Jungle Cruise guy because he claims Weird Al wrote a song about him on the Jungle Cruise. But in the in the song, like the character hates his life, so it's like yeah. not a really it's happy kind of song ironic. to be written by you. Yeah, I'm gonna be real. I don't believe him. I don't believe that he. Uh, <laughs> Neither that did we. Neither yeah. did we. But we did some googling and Wikipediaing, and either he has just inserted himself into this into other this. guy's name yeah. in life, or yep. he is the Jungle Cruise Dan. Or whatever and the fuck and you know what, Dan, Garrett? I'm yeah. gonna be really real. I believe every word of it. I, I trust that. <laughs> <in my life. laughs> I trust that man. Wait, so you guys. You guys almost had a podcast together. Yeah. Oh my God. Hey, it's still up for grabs if you want to get it. Yeah. Buy it, Zach. Yeah. If you want to leave this, Kelsey, and go do that instead. Honestly, honestly, this is much less expensive than the podcast. (laughs) Right. (laughs) We were like, give us a hundred thousand dollars for a podcast. They were like, what if we just put a famous person in a room? You, Zach has a scrotum (laughs) for a background. I can't feel my face. Rick just had neck surgery, and yet here he is. And here's the thing. Today, I was talking to the people. People whose house I'm staying at and one's like a reporter and one works at a startup and they were like I'm sorry did you just say you have to go watch George of the Jungle for work <laughs> 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 they're like talking war room shit and like saving the planet uh, and I'm like I'll be upstairs watching Brendan Fraser and iconic performance by Leslie Mann Leslie Mann, in I, 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 Leslie Mann. I'm so glad you said that Kelsey because I need a fucking reality check sometimes because I so I didn't have a weekend this weekend I was like working I was filming all weekend and I'm like oh I'm so exhausted my life's so hard my fucking work week today was taking <gasps> phone calls while I did yoga and then I watched Jungle the Jungle and napped on no, a couch George, George, of George, 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 George of the Jungle George of the Jungle George of the Jungle wait did I watch Get the wrong his... movie oh no you did yeah you did you uh, fucking did. <laughs> yeah, I similarly don't have a real job. I just watched George of the Jungle and reviewed a podcast in which I get high. Yeah. So I'm just watching, yeah. My, hanging out with high myself and then watching George of the Jungle. Hey, it's a pretty good life. Skillshare time, baby. Do you want skills? Do you want me to share them with you? Well, I won't, but they will. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Guys, you know about Skillshare? It's dope. You want to learn some stuff? Yeah, you do. Well, then listen up, sheeple. They got some great classes, okay? YouTube success, script, shoot, and edit with Marquez Brownlee, aka MKBHD. How about that? You can become a bigger YouTuber than me. You could do it. I believe it. And really, guys, there's nothing better than getting better. It's so fun to learn, and and it's something that I really miss. With Skillshare, advancing towards a goal is achievable with short lessons and hands-on projects. Do something today that you couldn't do yesterday with classes designed for real life. Explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash guilty and get a free trial of premium membership. That's Skillshare.com slash guilty for a free trial of premium membership. It's, 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 hey. just, it's so thanks time. for being here. Thanks for listening. And uh, thanks for not hating us. Because um, yeah. <laughs> we don't deserve.
Uh, we totally went off the rails. Chris, what the fuck is this movie? Why do okay. you love it? Let's talk it's a very, George yeah. of the Jungle. Let's do it because are you guys like movie kids? Did you guys have like a lot of movie? Like, did you have like a bookshelf of the bookshelf of VHSs VHS and DVDs? Yes. The best, See, yes, sir. Well, I know that you. I, I really appreciate mine. Were all your... bi- biblical, which sucked. Oh, but... okay. Oh, no. okay. You a Veggie Tales, mean, bro? I was a Veggie Tales, bro, no! man. I was up there telling those fucking tales, buddy. I was oh, oh, bu- oh boss. Oh, so oh I didn't know this we about you. We gotta unpack that another yeah. time. We really another gotta time. save that. We really, we really shelf. don't. See, movies, we had like six VHSs. We did not yes. have very many VHSs. Yeah. Same. I, okay. I, my TV time was Wait, limited I'll... as a kid, but then when I was a teenager, I got to watch more TV. So I got really into television, Nick and Knight, yeah. all that stuff. Run me through. Um, I know you can movies, picture. You can see right now your your VHSs. Yeah. What are they? Yeah. Tell me what like they the are. Ones Home on your... Alone. Hell yeah. Yes. Home Alone. Free Willy. Okay. Ooh. Um, I think like fucking like that movie Heidi or something. Like I don't know why we had that movie. I think I watched it once. And honestly, like I don't remember. Like those were the movies I watched. I didn't Did watch you have... very many. But one day, my dad came home from a Rotary Christmas event, and he won a ba- gift basket that was a movie disney movie gift basket and he had oh, jungle wow. to jungle in there and like some popcorn wait and wrong movie wrong movie george of the jungle george <laughs> of the jungle in there he had george of the jungle in there and uh some popcorn and candy and that george of the jungle had a slot on that shelf for the rest of my childhood wow did I you have it. joseph in the coat of many colors <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Very, very biblical. <laughs> very, very I, great movie. No, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Oh, Sound of Music. Gotta have Sound of Music. You had all of the good movies. You had all of like the classic. <laughs> That's all you VHS need. VHS period. Yeah, I, where you can just like keep watching those for your entire yeah. childhood, and you're a well-rounded kid. I know that like you're our guest, and it's about you, but I want to share some of the movies I had on my VHS. Uh, yeah. One, it takes two. Mary Kate. How many did watched- you have? Did you have a lot? Not a ton. I want you to feel say like, like a movie like, kid. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I'm gonna tell you. I watched it takes two so many times that I degraded part of the tape from rewinding it. Like it went blank for a second. Um, but I I had I feel like everyone okay. had like the VHS that didn't fit in. And for me, it was Point Break. And so I watched that movie. Mm very young and it was the first time i saw boobs in a movie and i was like yo my parents don't know we own this and i'm gonna show all of my friends show i mean i'm gonna keep that a secret and hide (laughs) it and then watch it in the dark and it makes sense (laughs) fast forward by the way because point break is basically just fast and furious the love affair began early yep whoa wow Wow. that's like you just did some like therapy on yourself you got deep into what your guilty pleasures really started as yeah actually i'm gonna there's a lot of talking animals in this movie uh i also just texted my sister what movies do we have as a kid other than home alone free willy and george of the jungle she immediately (laughs) texted back milo and otis okay it's a very homeward bound e movie yeah it's like yeah it's like 1970s homeward bound and i think we had homeward bound too because i've seen homeward bound a lot of times yeah so i guess i was really into the animals as characters thing (laughs) but not not ace ventura one uh, I liked what nature calls. I liked the mask and uh, liar liar a lot more than the Ace Ventura's, <clears throat> yeah. and that's an unpopular opinion that I just hold with me. I was never Ooh. crazy into Ace Ventura. What movie are we talking about? <laughs> oh, Ace Ventura. I think I also saw Ace Ventura two and Nature Calls before the first one. My sound went out, and I'm trying to come back in. And I have no. Have we even started talking about the fucking movie Jungle? No, the Jungle? no, no. We Kelsey, we've for just you. been talking we about paused. our childhood VHS collection, and to be honest, Guys, I'm so tempted to make on. that the entire episode. Move on. We have got this. You is are the gone. longest intro I've ever heard. We were waiting for you. We were for you. We were you. Go to the pleasures, and and you know what? The first pleasure, the first pleasure can be the animals were fantastic in this film. It was believable. Yes, the CGI. I agree. 
everything about you do you really need to give the synopsis it. zach for those of you who it's, don't know the synopsis is or <laughs> oh, <laughs> there we go. do, I do it Chris, do it go so off take it's over. a man take named over. it starts with a cartoon that is like this boy was raised by apes in the jungle yeah. don't worry about it it's part he got in a plane yeah. crash or something and they don't even want to go into the backstory any more than that which yep. i kind of respect so mm-hmm, then yeah. in a very Jane and Tarzan way, Leslie Mann shows up uh, with her fiance, who she seemed to not realize was coming on the trip. Uh, <laughs> and she kind of wants to get rid of him the whole time. You know, he's like a very smarmy, um, aristocratic type dude. Uh, and she falls in love with George when she when he saves her, uh, swings around. She brings it back to San Francisco, but she's from this fancy uh, family that won't life. accept him. And of course, event, uh, there's a B story where um, some of the Lyle's minions want to capture the talking ape poachers. that raised George. Um, yeah, well, th- uh, first they're not labeled as posters. First they're labeled as the best guys for finding people, the which detectives. is weird in Africa that those two guys from Jersey are, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, uh, they wind up the uh, bringing him works. back, bringing him back and... Um, uh, they want to turn turn the ape into a Vegas show. It all comes to a head. It you know it's going to end in the marriage of Leslie and, Mann and George, yeah. uh, and the Vegas show of the of the ape. You did know, I Chris, I want to say you did excellent. That you was did better than I would have. A lot. And frankly, hearing you uh, give the synopsis, Kelsey was right. We did. Uh, you kind of already knew what the movie was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it is exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is exactly yeah. what you think the mo- the plot is, and uh, yep, you nailed yep. it. All right. Okay, go to pleasures. pleasures. The animals in this deserve <laughs> Oscars. Whoever built the animatronics, whoever was the animal wrangler, we had a fucking live elephant. Animatronics. A live those were lion. those were just dudes, dudes in fucking suits. No, man. Yeah. No the animatronics. Fucking, the lion was not a man in a suit. That was animatronics and then there was a live lion and then there Wait, was That was a, a yeah. That was definitely a real lion. It was a mixture. (laughs) It was a mixture of multiple devices, live animals, animatronics, and puppeteering by humans. (laughs) Their full bodies were puppeteering. I saw We're real all monkeys. We're so mad. We're like, there was not a single robot in this film. I <laughs> saw yeah. fake monkeys. The, you think the elephant was a guy in a suit? Fuck off. Go back to fucking physics class, you idiot. <laughs> That was nice. Clearly. I'm talking about the fucking the the the, the monkeys. Oh well, I'm so glad on you drums. only saw one animal in this whole movie out of 85 <laughs> yeah. that existed. Yeah, and then existed. the fucking elephant. The elephants was this, like a CGI, and yes. then it was like an actual elephant, and then it was I don't know and what else you're robot. talking about with the animatronic. The the I, the elephant was absolutely an animatronic at one point. During that lion scene, I had to watch it a few times because what I love about it. If this is one of my pleasures is the campy the unapologetic campiness of it because that yeah. is definitely a stuffed animal lion cross cut <laughs> with a real lion yeah. and yeah. and we just buy it we yeah. just buy it yeah. but there's i don't even think there is a puppet i think it is a stuffed animal at one point during the during the lion fight it just cuts to the close up of the doll's face lion yeah. and i'm like okay these editors got to right. know that's hilarious yeah. to cut from a real lion to a obviously fake lion yes. and back to yeah. a real lion yeah, they know it that it's beautiful. based off a cartoon. It's a yeah. cartoon thing, so it's just be <laughs> as wacky the as you possibly can. Of the nineties <laughs> and what they probably made it in like ninety five, ninety six before it was released, like that was better than the fucking Disney President's ride. Like they were stacked <laughs> with their effects and practical effects. And not only did the animals perform well, but the fucking effects in general. I mean, we had this motherfucker flying across the Golden Gate Bridge. Excuse me. How that was not that? cheap. That was not fucking not cheap. They just had a dude That's do practical. it. And that was practical. We had him running across maybe sub-Saharan slash green screen at full mileage pace in Air Jordans, which we'll talk about that later. I mean, this man's body is my number one pleasure i know i kind of like skirted a little bit from practical effects to brendan fraser's body but listen no you have I, this abs is the, like that this is important 
This is important. Brendan this Fraser superstar. Guy, I want us to dedicate at least 10 minutes to Brendan yes, Fraser yeah. and give him the fucking yeah. respect I, that he deserves. Yes. I want so, him to impale me through a fucking tree with that <laughs> body. That man did not have a single ounce of not <clears throat> pure muscle chiseled. Did you see? I have never seen a body like that cut with a jawline that could mm, just slice up cocaine right on a glass <laughs> table. I mean, he was a <laughs> machine a moment. in this movie. The three of us are like, uh huh. Yes, I also was yeah. attracted. You to also I'm trying to imagine how yes, someone's sir. chin could smash up cocaine because it's yeah, so right. cut. <laughs> He's just like, yeah. Mm. Just, and then he goes, <laughs> But like, go off on the acting, but he did great. No, no, I mean, it's his body. Yeah. For our younger viewers that don't know, there was a time when Brendan Fraser was arguably the biggest fucking star on the planet. Bigger than Brad Pitt. It was Will okay. Smith and oh. Brendan Fraser. Yeah. And it's crazy to look back at this like weird, goofy time where this goofy and surprisingly hot motherfucker yeah. was like this mega star. And this actually kind of was the beginning of his domination. Um, yeah. But I did not realize when I was a kid that Brendan Fraser was hot. Because no. I was a kid. I was a straight right. young I thought boy. He, was just, he and, was just the dude. Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah, just he was like just that guy homie. with the hair. Based in science and built by psychologists, Noom doesn't just give you rules, but instead teaches you how to think so you can accomplish your personal health goals, stick with them long term, and get healthy for good. Look, I think this is really cool. For me, I suffer from chronic pain, so it's all about having regularity, and I'm really bad. I'm really bad at working exercise into my life, even though I need it. But look, with Noom, there's an ease. You can do it for like just 10 minutes a day. The tone is nice and, and comforting, and it's really nice to just like have a chart to see how you progress. There's a real empathy to the app that I find really helpful, especially for me as I'm starting out. Like, look, you're not going to get it right all the time, but that's okay. You're building habits here. You can get a personalized coach and they help you understand yourself and your goals. Noom's cognitive behavioral approach means that you're not just improving your health, you're gaining the knowledge and habits you need to stay healthy. And everyone's busy. I I'm the same. But that's why Noom doesn't demand much of your time. They're only asking for 10 minutes a day. There's a science to getting healthier. It's called Noom. Sign up for your trial today at noom.com slash guilty. Learn how to get healthy with Noom. Sign up for your trial today at noom, noom.com slash guilty. Sign up for Noom today at noom.com slash guilty. Okay, look, I get his body is rocking in this movie, but otherwise, <laughs> is Brendan yes. Fraser yes. hot? Or he, like, I feel that's like his the question I'd like to pose. very big. He is objectively his face doesn't hit on society by societal norms. He is a very hot person. But here's the thing about Brendan Fraser. You want to give him his justice. He was made fun of by the industry for being these like goof, doofy, dumb. I'm making air quotes characters that he felt yeah. that he could not propel his career career in the industry and not be taken seriously and that's why he actually disappeared from hollywood for a long time until recently he did not think oh, anyone took okay. him serious beyond a pretty okay. face and a doofy attitude that's sad that explains a lot and yeah. it's really sad because i was always like what the fuck happened, happened to brendan fraser i always heard there was some some hollywood secrets about like the that's what I is thought. Is Chris it was. about to take over Kelsey's I, exposing corner and tell us the tea? I don't exactly know what the tea is, and maybe it's influenced by like pop ups who are like, "Do you ever wonder why Brendan Fraser doesn't work anymore?" Right? Yeah, it and might like, be that because yeah. I know I've seen that, but I think somebody has told me. I see it almost every time I'm, I'm like on it. the internet, and I never click it, and I desperately want to know right now. But you look at his career, but especially in this movie, I really a pleasure is that he allows himself are we all googling what happened to brendan fraser every <laughs> I, I am currently looking at his imdb so i'm on your page right now he was in the mummy I was, I was like this like this was the first thing though but you're kind of right i mean he had airheads yeah airheads <laughs> I mean, which i love i mean i love 
I literally, you could go through his IMDb and almost every single one of those movies is a guilty pleasure of mine. Oh, like I no. love Brendan Fraser's filmography so much. And I think that something in time. Oh. Just, just really quick. His run started in 1997 with George of the Jungle. Then he had The Mummy in 99, Dudley Do-Right in 99, Blast from Hell the yeah. Past in 2009, Bedazzled yeah. in 2000, oh, Monkey Bone in 2001, The Mummy Returns in 2001, The Quiet oh, American. In 2002, I, I have the tea. Back to Kelsey owning Kelsey's exposing corner. He claimed essay on a member of the Foreign Hollywood Press Association who basically runs who becomes successful in the town. They're the people who decide who wins the Oscars, who wins any major who wins award. The Clubs. Yeah, he claimed essay by someone, and they made sure he never worked successfully again that i think that's important to highlight and like now he's making a comeback apparently fuck yeah and we'll be part of that comeback by promoting and the, and the comeback starts right <laughs> now don't his, call his it a greatest we're gonna put respect on that name as george of the jungle because look man should. this isn't it's not like you can like pour through this script and look at your character's lines playing <laughs> george and be like i got it wow. i know what i'm gonna do <laughs> it's like he is the same fucking see he says the same thing over and over and over again and somehow brennan fraser makes it likable mm -hmm. and captivating yeah. and i didn't and notice yeah. funny. Same line. he He's does the same actor. joke over and over again it's the same gags this movie has like how many times can you watch a man walk into a branch Many. Apparently over 12. You can With watch it over 12 times and it's Fuck. always Several funny. Times. Yeah. But yeah. this is what I love about Brendan Fraser so much is his commitment. Mm -hmm. And you look at all those movies we just talked about. His commitment to doofiness. He's so silly. And like he is not playing this for all ages. He's playing it for the little kids as a hot man with a rippling bod. And... That is not something that I think most actors would do. They'd be like, nah, it's not cool. Yeah. Like he went from this to the mummy. He became basically fucking Indiana Jones and then went back to goofy children shit with, with Dudley Do-Right. No one else does that. That's a super funny thing to just be like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting real shredded. I'm, I'm trying to diet or whatever. What's the role for? It's a kids movie. Don't worry about it. Like, just, but can it's, I it's say, a movie for children. Like, one of my He was in the gym every day for two for, yeah. for yes. four months for Georgia but, the Jungle. Like that was kind of one of my pleasures, right? It was like rewatching <laughs> this, like to Garrick's point, I was like, okay, listen, it's a children's movie and it's very problematic in places, but also this has a message for adults that I think they marketed it to the Watch wrong audience. Watch out for that tree. Yes. Watch yeah, out. exactly. Like, Watch the, out for this that tree. has great tone. Smart people are British. <laughs> yes. We're, what else do you need to know? We're shaming coaching. <laughs> we're, we're getting women out of toxic relationships. We're breaking down yeah. toxic masculinity. We're, we're, we're gender bending with with him wearing the dress yes, as well yes. and then the, the narrator it. calls it out and i was like oh yeah that's i think really nice. that this movie while it has a very big chunk of racism involved i think there was a message that they could have marketed to teens and adults missed opportunity but was one of my pleasures of like oh you know what this was minus a few parts enjoyable to watch as an adult garrick what were some of your pleasures I liked I liked the tour guides yes. shitting on him the entire time. Yeah, it was super oh, funny sure. Those because it's just hilarious. like the like um when he when he gives him the camera yes. and he's like oh you know here's a magic blah 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 and he's just like bitch don't talk to me yes. like that and I have a Leica M4 or whatever with a 35 millimeter Zeiss lens yes and um who were they they were they, they were like the tour that guides were, that were of that area. The, um, Three African tour guides. Yeah, yeah, that. right. And they they were set, they were told that they only speak Swahili and all that stuff, but they actually spoke English because that's what everybody in the world does. They're just like, yeah, I'm I'm just gonna speak my language so I can talk shit about you to your face, yes. and then secretly know what you're saying. By the like, way, why major not? major shout out to the head of the tour guides, Richard Roundtree. Fucking Shaft himself is in this movie, guys. Wow. Uh, yeah. Those yeah. that moment oh, made me go oh. like, oh my gosh, no, they're about to be so problematic. And then to have that reversal was so yeah. refreshing for yeah. 97. In 97. Thank in 97. Because the other, other thing is that you can't, you're not going to have white tour guides in this. And it's like they needed tour guides. They needed people to like, you know, 
put them around or move them around or whatever. And if they did put like white tour guys, it'd be like, well, this doesn't make sense. That's stupid. Casting pleasure. Shout out to Leslie Mann, who plays the, you know, the Jane of the Tarzan Jane relationship. You know her from all the Ursula. Avatar movies. She is Ursula is her name, which where the yeah. fuck? <laughs> Why would you what, name all your the child names? It's after so unfortunate. Disney villain. It's yeah. terrible. Maybe they wanted to, maybe there's some little kid out there who is like, Every time I tell anyone I'm, my name is Ursula, they think I'm a fucking sea witch. You got to change <laughs> right. this for little Ursula. I need a out hero. There. Yeah. For the right. yeah for all of the Ursulas out there. If we have yeah. one Ursula who's listening to oh, this, mm. I want you to yeah. prove to me like any Ursula. Get at me. Get in okay. my DMs. N- prove to me that your name is Ursula. That your birth name is Ursula, and I will send uh-huh. you. Ten American dollars. Why ten dollars? Send her a voice because that's what she's looking for. She's looking for the <laughs> j- voice of a fucking mermaid. <laughs> I will also record your voicemail message. I just don't believe any exists. I've never met an Ursula. I don't think it's uh, a real name. I've met. I've met a couple. Really? You've I've met, met a couple? I've met. Two. I've met two. I've met two. Ursi. I don't know why. It's a couple of two. That is a couple. Yeah. Yeah. One of my one of my kindergarten teachers was named Ursula. So mm. no kidding. That's it. What but that's an old did, old lady now. What context did you, you know? meet an Ursula, Garrick? School. I met an Alana and an Ursula that were friends, oh. and this was Alana's like in not weird. Why, sixth why grade. Friends Alana's not. Weird. <laughs> oh no! And I just I just put up two. I didn't put quotes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I didn't put up two. I met an Alana. <laughs> A lot. I, I went to do count. Uh, a count. Sorry, an Alana and an Ursula, and they were just had like rhyming names, and it was kind of creepy, and it always stuck out of my. Okay, head but that, Leslie yeah. Mann has not fucking aged a day. She looked amazing. She, then. Oh, she looks. She looks she amazing looks now. That was my first pleasure that I wrote down. Besides the theme the, song, the thing that, 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 that was movie. one of my guilts is that she was she was in the movie, and I was like, yo, she's one of the funnier yeah. comedic actresses. So Let funny. her run. Yeah, Let her agreed. run, Doug. Like, what are you they doing? They treated her like but, piss before she was able to show off like who she could actually be as a comic. Yeah, and knocked yeah. up. Yeah, she was. So she, funny. She's not funny in this movie, and she was not given that material. Right. But I will say, she's adorable in this movie. Like, she is so cute. Mm. She's so earnest. She's so she's sweet. So weak. I believe her. She's also weak. <laughs> Just saying yeah, what it she's is. She's very weak. She's, she's Jane. very damsel in distress. Being saved by, t- saved by Tarzan. Well, she knows what she yeah. wants. She stands up for herself, you know? She stands up against her parents. Yeah. Oh, oh, a good, um, a really, really big pleasure of mine that like got a legitimate laugh at me, uh, out of me was when he was trying, when the ape was trying to teach George how to talk to yeah. women. And then he did the yeah. thing. And then he was, and then it didn't work. And he was like, well, did you throw the leaves? I, I died <laughs> laughing. I was like on the floor because it was just, it's, I love that style of it. Um, he taught, what, what the premise is that he like taught him how to get a woman by, by telling by him doing how apes get things. other apes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry and then he that. embarrasses himself. Yeah. The ape played by uh, yeah. John Cleese. Insane. Um, of course who it's I John love- Cleese. I love that whole character, I, I, and I'm with you. They, so both, they do it twice. Like, first, John Cleese teaches uh, Brendan Fraser how to seduce, and then Brendan Fraser tries to seduce him in a waterfall. And both times, I was, like, belly laughing like an idiot yeah. at this movie yeah. for kids. Here's my I loved question, it. though, about the ape, because he clearly was the most actualized character in the jungle because he got his hands on the books, <laughs> one, the, the plane crash. Mm-hmm. That's how he had all this knowledge. If he knew how to for some reason have an english accent but if he knew how to teach Mm. like he clearly built a house a tree house for them like he was the smartest most actualized but yet still a man cannot get a fucking woman did he build the house or did george no he built the house george had no frame of reference of houses he was dropped off in the jungle did do you think it's kind of fucked up that he was obviously the leader of this of this ape clan and then as soon as he got uh poached and brought to vegas and got put on stage he just kind of left these motherfuckers Mm, or like is that last scene when he has a show in vegas and he looks happy about it is that just his showmanship or like did he go like oh we're in vegas now i'm a star and totally forgot forgot about about his his upbringing that was that was set up set up for the sequel gotta Uh, be where they're just like well (laughs) what kind of zany ways can we set this guy up you know it's just like oh let's just have him have a residency at the 
fucking Cosmo. <laughs> the Cosmo in 90s. Now, Chris, <laughs> as the... Yeah. As the jungle to jungle slash George of the Jungle expert here, uh, why do you think that <laughs> one one ape had the gift of language, but the others could only communicate via bongo grams? <laughs> <laughs> that's, bongo a, that's a great grams. question. Where the, the so throughout the movie, the other apes will ju- they just play bongos. I don't know where the bongos come no. from, uh, but that is how they communicate, and they send from letters the, from to the each crash. other. Ah, the people okay. who, it was a very who are on yeah, the plane, plane has were a bunch obviously, of bongos. <laughs> yeah, we're obviously musicians, yeah. and the bongos are indestructible, and they survive the crash. Mm-hmm. Of course, obviously. Same with Makes their sense. bandanas and um, karate equipment. Yeah, and the treehouse yeah. that was also on oh, the okay. plane. That's, That's how. how we it, but didn't that. you want that treehouse as a kid? You so wanted that fucking treehouse. Oh, 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 of yeah. course I did. It had a fucking elevator. Yeah, yeah I wanted that shit. Yeah. <laughs> also, I will also say a pleasure of mine. I love the narrator. Yes. I love the role the of the narrator. Yes. I love the meta aspect yes. of the entire thing. Yeah. I thought it was so fun. Yep. That was like when he flew off, uh, one of the tour guides flies off the bridge and you're kind of like, uh, what the hell? That was intense. And he's like, don't worry. Nobody dies in this movie. Yeah, they just right. get don't very, worry. very They hurt. get big boo boo. They just get a he's, big he's, boo boo. Yeah, you got to say it right. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, third love. Third Love uses the measurements of millions of women to design bras with all day comfort and support. They stand behind their products if you don't love it. Exchanges and returns are free within 60 days. Third Love is so good, it honestly makes me wish I wore a bra. I'm gonna say it. Every Third Love bra is made with signature memory foam cups, no slip straps, and a scratch free band. Maggie loves Third Love. Uh, I frankly have never worn it, uh, but I hear great things. Kelsey loves Third Love. She's out this week, which is why I'm reading it. So you, you, this is fun. This is fun for everybody. We're all enjoying this. Are you one of the 80% of women? wearing the wrong bra size? And do you even know? Do you know if your bra size is right? The fitting room quiz is fun, it's easy, it's interactive, and it focuses on size, breast shape, current fit issues, and your personal style to deliver bras and underwear that are perfect for you. Third Love knows your one true fit is out there, so right now they are offering our listeners 20% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash guilty now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 20% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash guilty for 20% off today. Happy bra times. I was thinking about you and like specifically Baby Chris, right? Because I knew that this was a movie you watched as a kid. I just felt it because fucking duh. And I feel, (laughs) tell me if I'm wrong, that you as a kid saw this like very meta movie where characters are breaking the fourth wall. The narrator is like interacting with characters, is manipulating the world. And I could picture you being like, Wait, you can do that? Like stories yeah, can I do love that? It. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I'm always like super into that yeah. and attracted to that. Because your shit's yeah. super meta yeah. all the time. And I wonder if this is where it came Whoa. from. Whoa. I had the same wonder as I watched it yesterday. I was like, oh, is this why I love meta shit? It was a bit ahead of its time. I love when, you know, plays or movies are like a aware of the story that they're telling at the yeah. Like aware of the format that they're telling as they're doing it. It makes you weirdly As, buy in more. Mm-hmm. It's like, I know this is weird, but... And then you're like, okay, I'll accept it. I think at one, at one point they go, every movie has a coincidence, and this movie has this yeah. one. Yeah. And that finally just... You buy that they run into each other so much more than if you went like, oh, they just run into each other? Yeah. Okay. Right. And right. it, it yeah. never gets old. Like, so. it surprises you every time the voiceover comes back, the narrator. You're like, it worked every time. That's the difference between narration and, and VO, yes. where it's just like tasteful. Yes. Tasteful. It has <laughs> narration a purpose. Is just tasteful. Yeah, yeah, it has a purpose. It like changes the world and all that stuff. But like VO is just, all right, well, you're definitely Lazy. just explaining what we should be feeling yep. right now. And that kind of mm. is unfortunate, blah, blah, yes. blah. Can you talk about the greatest pleasure of all, which is the theme song fucking slaps? Oh. Great. And one. even though That's only I watched yeah. this movie, the three other people in this house all day have been singing the song. And I was like, that is fucking yeah. proof of a viral theme song. Well, if you don't know, Kelsey, the, the theme song was from a cartoon a, of which the property was based. Um, and really, like, it is the. I, I looked it up. 
it has only like 16 episodes or something. Oh. It, it was a very short-lived show, uh, but it has this cultural staying power, yes. which is really impressive, especially considering it's just one line. Tarzan. <laughs> it, it's yeah. a Tarzan. Like, it's, sh- it's dumb Tarzan. Yeah, There's it's no, like a yeah. Tarzan if he was bad or if he is actually human or whatever. I forgot about the word spoof until like yesterday. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is a spoof. Yeah, it's just, but it's like essentially a two-hour-long sketch of Tarzan. Yeah. you know yeah. what I mean. Like, of Tarzan. is yeah. it better than Tarzan? Sorry to that guy that made the theme song with the drum. But the ba-dum, cartoon. Ba-dum. What's that guy's name? Oh, you mean Phil? Phil like yeah, Phil Collins. Fuck Phil Collins. Collins. The Georgia, the I'm taking song. George of the Jungle oh, every God. time. Ooh, that's uh, a no, throwdown. not at all. That is um. Absolutely you're telling me you're taking. Not. You can feel it coming in the air tonight over George, George, George of Wait. the Jungle. Yes. That's Absolutely. not the Tarzan song. That's not the Tarzan song, but it's also, not? yes. <laughs> it's What's not. What's the Tarzan uh, song? The Tarzan song is, you'll be in my Oh, fuck heart. that song so many times over. That song is oh, sleep. Be... That song the, is the so entire boring. The entire Tarzan s- soundtrack will be like a top 100 if it was released right now. A hundred percent. The George of the Jungle shit. It is a re- yeah. It is a re- it is a repeated bar, which is like fine. Yeah. Go for it if you're a child. Me? But Tarzan is the the. It's artistic. Think, it's an artistic. Soundtrack. I think my style is um <laughs> elevated. My taste is not dun, cheap. Dun, 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 I think <laughs> I'm just fighting for dun, the dun, underdog dun, dun, here. Dun, dun. I don't think <laughs> yeah, if you were in a cabin, you were singing the Tarzan song all day. It would get in everybody else's head. That's you fair, know, like wrong. I, George of the Jungle, George of the 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 Tarzan soundtrack is like, it's like like to pimp a butterfly. Like the whole thing is beautiful, but yeah, like, yeah, do yeah, we yeah, know? Do is. Do, is it the hit? It you is know, is me. it stronger? Like, is it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. What is the it fuck? like? Yes, absolutely. You know, I, I know it has all right. There. It has all right. <laughs> all right on it. <laughs> what the fuck? It has all right about? on it. But overall, but it's, you know, like it's, okay, fine. That other one, the untitled one, (laughs) where you're like, you're like, this is still beautiful and amazing. And it's a, it's a poem, but like, is it a hit? You know? Yeah. George of the Jungle is a hit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what I was George of the Jungle is just a single. It didn't even have an album. It didn't, <laughs> didn't need it. Yeah. It's just it like, you know how like Childish no, Gambino man. just started releasing just songs? He's like, I'm never going to release an album with Summertime Magic. This is it. You're getting the song and I'm going away again. That's what no, George I of the think Jungle that's, did. That's the George of the Jungle theme is one hit wonder territory. You're in yeah, Rebecca Black is. territory. Uh-oh. You are not in fucking Phil Collins. Let's no, let, let's be we're real. Talking fucking, uh, forest 1748. Music. We're talking forest music. I'm giving it to George. That other shit is boring. George of the George of the Jungle is New Radicals fucking and singing at Biden's inauguration, and you're yeah. like, "Whoa, this song is still good." But Phil Collins is like, "I'm still touring, baby." He's like emotional yeah. torture porn, and I don't support it. In that, you know, there are other baby mama separation scenes that I will give the music to, like Baby Mine, Bette Midler of Disney's Dumbo. I'm not giving mm. it number one spot. I'm giving it to George. Whoa, 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 wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You think that the Dumbo song is better? <laughs> <laughs> now we know Phil now Collins? we know what territory we're dealing with. Now we know. I just think Phil Collins is very is- low on my like being impressed by <laughs> songwriting list. Really? I hung oh, out with one God. of my sister's friends, little brothers. I got somehow that, like That's too many. You guys should hang out because you're the same age. You know, like, mm-hmm. you know, my older sister friends you little brother and he really loved the tarzan soundtrack as it came out and i was like this kid's weird so i'm gonna be honest it was <laughs> it's more about my relationship with that kid than it is it about is. i don't i don't know if it's good it's good i'm just thinking about that it's kid so being good. like let's listen to tarzan again and me being like i gotta get yeah. out of here okay hang out okay with my so friends. so we're all we're already dealing with the fact that we're talking about movie soundtracks right like that's already weird in like the purview of like society it's just like you don't sit down and listen to a movie soundtrack unless you're a it's fucking like nerd Beyonce, like us right in all honesty though i do like francis in the lights so i think that <laughs> if tarzan came out today i would like it, would it be because i like, by francis I would like it. It. there it is yeah. it's the same tarzan shit is definitely it's a francis just, in the lights it's soundtrack. just francis in the lights <laughs> phil collins <laughs> oh, yeah. grew up i mean was 
his spirit went to fucking Francis in the Lights. He's alive, right? That he's kid, alive. my my sister's friend's younger brother was Francis in the Lights. I got. Okay. I will be honest. Okay, nice. there it is. So <laughs> it would make there. sense. Full yeah. circle. By it the way, we'll we'll move on from Tarzan, which is the movie that we're not Thank discussing. You. But do you know we're why? Not about Tarzan. <laughs> why right, Kelsey right. Uh, thought that in the air tonight was the song from Tarzan is because there was a viral commercial of a gorilla sitting at a drum set for yes. like a chocolate company. Yes. Playing drum. And maybe I thought and it, it was uh, this movie. And it looked yes. exactly like the monkey in the suit from this movie. Yes. Okay. So. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Just, I mean, let's just segue into the guilt straight in. The fact that she said that San Francisco was the jungle and not New York, <laughs> I was almost about to like fucking yes! tackle her. I was like, are you out of your fucking mind? You're in, you're, you're in San Francisco. So and you're confused. Saying, oh, you went from one jungle to another. No, you, no, you yes. didn't. You went from one jungle to a hill. Yes. Get the fuck out of <laughs> here. Literally, me and my friend were like, oh yeah, it's New York. Like you can even just tell by the girls that they're talking. Yeah, this is New York, the interiors. And then the bridge thing happens and we were like what this is san no! francisco what, the fuck? what is you- crazy about san francisco absolutely <laughs> nothing is happening there they yeah. did it for the bridge you know, I by the way, maybe, insurance wise the bridge scene's amazing you know that that's how this movie was sold by the way the, the someone like some cocaine addled executive <laughs> stumbled in to mickey mouse's office and was like listen we got Tarzan, and he's gonna he's gonna go off the Golden Gate Bridge. I got it. Let's fucking do this. Boom, 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 boom. He grabs Brendan Fraser. He starts cutting his coke up with his chin. <laughs> 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 or he just had he had the footage of him uh, swinging on the Golden Gate Bridge, and then they built the rest of the movie around that. That's amazing. It's a That's, great. The moment. bridge is the best. The bridge is way better than if he was like <laughs> Spider Maning through New York City. I mean, I guess that's why it's funny. But like swinging is like George's thing. Yeah. And he's yeah. so bad at it. And yeah. like we never address that like it always ends poorly. Like when are you going to learn how to swing, dude? Well, and what's crazy is that the climax, you would expect like, okay, George his entire life has been trying to swing well and he can never do it. And finally, in the end, he's going to swing right. No, he just swings worse than ever before. Yeah, <laughs> he right. Just- he doesn't that, grow at all. No. He just grows further in love or whatever. He doesn't get better at yeah. swinging. He's just like, I mean, but is it is it because he lacks embarrassment? Oh, or is ooh, it because he doesn't want to? You know, like he doesn't care about getting better. Like that did was the he whole learn thing. shame because he was raised by apes? Shame is it's, like an in, is an inherent uh, like oh. tribe behavior like you learn how to shame someone out of your tribe so you don't get eat by the saber-toothed tiger but maybe he never had that that's why he's so fucking likable i know we're on guilt but there was a really lovely scene where like he wanted leslie mann to dance and and she was like no i'm embarrassed he's like there's no one to be embarrassed by it's just you and me and i'm like this is this is so cute this is cute shit being straight up this has the ted lasso effect man this is this is exactly (laughs) This is exactly why Ted Lasso is so likable yes. because he's yeah. like, yeah, you don't know the thing that you're in, oh. but you're trying your hardest and it's fucking Damn. beautiful and you don't let anybody else get to mm-hmm. you. And it's great. It's just like, yeah, I'm just keep on being Georgia of the jungle because that's where I'm from. That's where I was raised. So I'm why would you. I try to be anything else? Wow. Yeah, I'm going to hit you marriage. with this. A man from the jungle who is so earnest and sweet and through a series of well-intentioned hijinks, makes the world around him a better place. This is the blueprint for Paddington. Wow. <laughs> it's a blueprint. When Paddington, are we gonna baby? do it? Are we yeah. ever gonna Ted do Lasso it? Ted Lasso effect is also the Paddington effect. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I we apologize. will cover Paddington and Paddington Two, the two greatest yeah. movies it's not ever fair. made. Okay. It's, it's not, not fair. fair. It's that's going to be we, called we pleasure. Start pleasure. Off. Yeah. yeah, pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> we start Welcome off to pleasure, with pleasure, yes. where we talk about the greatest film fucking ever. Okay. My guilt, and this happens in any sort of like legend, um, like jungle movie. You see it in like Jumanji. You see it in any where they go into the forest type film. It's where they give away the entire fucking plot in the legend, right? Like they're sitting around in the circle with the tour guides and they're like, tell them the legend of the white ape in Deadass. I was like, there's mm. a white ape? And I didn't realize that they were talking about George 
um, where they say yeah. he's lives in the woods or the jungle. He's been raised jungle. <laughs> by apes that he can't find the love of his life and that he needs to find his partner or something like that. And I'm like, you guys don't do that. At least try and throw us a curveball and like make something surprising. And I understand this is a, mo- a kid's movie. Maybe they were spoon feeding us. But yeah. I just I hate that. It's a guilt of mine when I'm like, I already know they're going to get married now. That's how you yeah. knew they'd end up happily ever after. Yes, the <laughs> tour guide told Wait, us. Just, you hate you hate any foreshadowing. Ryder, or? Garrick, and Chris Reinecker, I expect more from both of you in this moment. Zach, we're still in class. That's that's fair. It's fair. It's fair to, to hate foreshadowing. To that um, degree. Like that blatant yes. f- to that degree. It's it's actually crazy. It's like Chekhov's <laughs> legend or Chekhov's conversation where it has to come to pass. There's like the good version subject. of it that Edgar Wright does in all of his movies where like you don't realize yeah. yes. he's just laid out the entire plot yeah, and then yeah. you yeah, watch it for the fun. third time. You're like, oh, oh my God. Fuck. Yes. But yeah, this right, is right. Very over. Also, Edgar version. Wright is yeah. the number one perfect uh, creator, in my opinion. I know Chris like sent Wait, do you me guys know that? a link of I love Edgar, Edgar Wright. Wright when I was an intern at BuzzFeed him. and it changed the way that I made videos. I'm just... Do you guys know oh, Scott yeah. Pilgrim is in theaters right now? Why? Do you want to go? Yes, it is. Like Scott, Scott, they just re-released it. Do you want to just go yeah. fucking right after this I've, and go watch I've Scott Pilgrim? If you guys go to I've see a fucking theaters, movie think, together without times. me while I'm in New York, yeah. I'm going to fucking I've, kill you both. I'm going to say overall, the third act was just pretty disappointing because there were just <laughs> no surprises. Yeah. There yeah. were just oh, no the surprises. Air didn't like surprise there's you? gimmicky stuff. The Air Jordans was, was funny. I remember liking that part when I was a kid. Okay. Um, I was delighted. I was also a little, a little unfocused during that part, which also yeah, shows I, you something about the plot. Yeah, third act. It kind of lost also. me. This is I like, was like, I, knew, I get it. I know it. what's about to happen. Yeah, yeah, I know it's, it's totally going to gonna happen. And then I feel like they added in a Goonies water slide, which, <laughs> hey, I get it. You got me. I love water yeah. slides. And my childhood imagination was full of inventing water slides in my head, going like, what if that was a water slide? What if this was a water slide? So I do love that, but I, I didn't feel like, I felt like that was a rewrite. It was like, this third act sucks. What if we had a water slide? <laughs> No, it was right. definitely Disney being like, just in case, this is the biggest thing ever, theme park, mm. water slide. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? like yeah. They, but don't yeah, you feel like that's sure. what the third act was? Was like everything was just a chaotic banana slip, fart joke, fight scene, which I know we're on guilt, mm-hmm. but we have to just go back for a pleasure for just a brief moment. These, we have so many pleasures. Hey, had, it's George of the lo- Jungle. There's a lot of pleasure. These the most amazing fight scene sequences I've ever fucking seen choreographed in my yeah. entire life. There was a part that I wrote <laughs> where I put, I put, oh my God, the fight scene between the poachers and George in the third act. The guy gives George a titty twister. <clears throat> George then makes yeah. him smell his armpits and physically turns yep. green, then does this double punch yep. thing with his elbow that goes to his <clears throat> fist and his elbow fighting two people, then forces the monkey to fart on him for the second time. Then they tickle George yeah. and the <laughs> elephant shoots a toucan out of his trunk into the villain's ass like a blow dart. Yeah. That's one fight sequence. A man's sequence. asshole gets impaled yeah. by a toucan's beak. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that was yeah. my my yeah. revival to the third act was like, okay, but at least they gave us the most iconic fight scenes better than the fucking Departed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 toucan gave new meaning to the phrase eating ass. Ha <laughs> ha Yeah. <laughs> there he is. I'm sorry. That's it, there not, he is. Or maybe original meaning. There he is. It I took him 45 minutes to show up, but he he arrived. <laughs> As also like a theater loving person, it felt like that was just really hilarious fight choreography. Yes. Like it's just A yeah, plus it's all fun. the way through. They have won it's an super award. theatery, gimmicky, and it, they also literally have like cartoon sound effects as it's happening. Doink. It's like yeah. Yeah. I think there are oh. some like BuzzFeed sounds in there that were like shoo, shoo. <laughs> some witch hands. <laughs> shoo, shoo. Yeah. yeah, I love the um, the cartoon sound when someone smacks on a thing and then wipes down the wall and goes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what produces that sound, yeah. but I love it. The the okay, we have to go back to guilt though, because we're just making this a whole hype podcast for how great okay. this movie is. Yeah. Someone say something bad. Yeah, okay. I have, I have another okay, pleasure. I have one. No, Zach. I have one. I have a guilt. I have a guilt that is about <laughs> guilt, guilt, Disney. Guilt, guilt. 
Disney as okay, a whole. Okay, here we go. It's right? a large okay. one. So this is a, this is a large one. This one is pretty upsetting. Okay. So they uh, it's also starts off with a pleasure. The 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 CGI on the elephant Amazing. dog was yeah. it was yeah. solid for a 1997 Amazing. movie. You're like, oh wow, this is actually this is also, <laughs> this is actually pretty yeah. good. Blah blah blah. Right. So if they can do that that well back in 1997. In your live action Mulan, put Mushu in that shit, dog. What are you doing? <laughs> Just spend the money. Put him this in there. Put him in there. That's my guilt. Yes, that because they're, fucking, a different they're movie. trying to save money. I know, but they're trying to save money, and it's just like you have so much money. Just you just fucking gave put us him in a the backwards-handed pleasure. I don't. You I guys, don't, is don't, this movie flawless? Do we really not have fuck. any fucking guilt? <laughs> I don't fucking care. Rick. I said I the mean, third was... act has a few problems, but really not that many. Here's a real guilt, yeah. okay? How can Nomad Land, <laughs> land win Best I'm Picture done. when this fucking George of the Jungle is <laughs> right here? I'm leaving. I'm going to have dinner. I'm leaving. I this this, this movie's perfect. We're done. Kelsey, Kelsey, remember the, remember the horse scene. Remember the horse scene. What? Oh, okay. yes. Now are you yes. staying? That, now are you that staying? That was beautiful. That yeah. was a pleasure. Are you fucking That's, kidding me? Uh, yeah. Because I just realized that we talked about how hot Brendan Fraser is, and didn't we talk didn't talk about, about, about that scene. horse scene. Because like I said, I think he's got a great, great Fucking paint He's that got picture. great abs, this but I never really also saw Fair. Brennan. Fair. I never saw Brennan as as a hot guy, and then in that scene, you're like, oh, I guess this oh, character yeah. is sexy as fuck. I saw him as the father of my children in that scene. Brendan Fraser is. is wearing a lacy white shirt, open fucking buttoned down almost to his navel, running with the horse, just back and forth. They're almost playing tag, and there is a wall of eight women. Who, I'm women. so sorry for everyone that has to hear me say this. They are so wet for Brendan Fraser. What? <laughs> They're, so They're so moist. They're so moist. I I also loved the scene where um, uh, her friend, who should have been played by Catherine Hahn, walks in on George naked <laughs> and sure. just is like so transfixed by the sight of his dick like immediately is is a convert and wants to 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 uh, uh pray at the altar of Brendan Fraser's body that every woman is so horny for him in this movie unapologetically and I it's so funny yeah yeah there's a little bit of like it it becomes a little bit of a balance of like if we gender swap, this would be a fucked up movie. Just think about it. If it was all the men being like, yeah, whatever. Who cares if she's from the jungle and doesn't know anything about society? At least she's hot. You should bang her. You know, like, and it would be like, this is abusive. Like, yeah. I was going to marry this this well, look woman at, look who at, has her stuff together, but I'd rather have this hot one who doesn't know anything about right. society. Look at how I'm fucking put her in my dumb she is. She's so <laughs> stupid. Exactly. She's so, like, I fucking now, need her. Now, this is what I I'm talking right about, now. guys. These, yeah, are, the, really these are the guilt I was asking for. I, guilt, can we trust Leslie Mann's decisions in this film, or was she just concussed the entire oh, time? Oh, big time concussions. Um, big time concussions. I think and that she doesn't know what's going on. And there's no way that they... <laughs> I I, there's no way that they actually procreated either because there's no way that Brendan Fraser has balls after smacking into that many trees. I think she was concussed <laughs> yeah, and had yeah, someone yeah. else's baby. I think I think it took a couple tries. I think it took a couple tries, and that's that's okay. Yeah. It happened. And she fainted a lot. Do you I, think he was good in bed, Kelsey? Do you think like George of the Jungle I mean, would be good in bed? If he or fucks he like, like a monkey, yes. Have you seen monkeys fuck? <laughs> yes what? or no? no? You've never no. seen a monkey no. fuck no. sensual? Uh, they feel very like nah, to me, yeah. not really like yeah. sexy. When it's when it's a guy that hot, you're expecting that much work to be done. You're like, you're there's, gonna there's jackhammer no fucking... me, and you're gonna go back to your fucking treehouse, and it's gonna be yeah, fucking two and a half minutes of unabashed bliss, <laughs> and I am going to not come at all. But it will be the most memorable sex I've ever had in my fucking life. <laughs> Right, right, because of how fast it was, <laughs> because of, both both in length and in consistency. It'd also be cool to like fuck him on a vine, yeah. like as you're swinging. I bet he could right. do some oh. freaky stuff After with the vine. After seeing him Maybe. fucking climb that bridge, honey, he could do whatever he <laughs> yeah. wants to me. There, I don't give there's, a fuck. There's a there's a meme <clears throat> of um of Tarzan swinging with Jane with two hands, oh. right? <laughs> And in the picture is just like, wait, how is he swinging? And then they show the behind, and he has the vine in between his butt cheeks. And I don't. <laughs> that shit makes me laugh every time. I guess for the sake of um, parody here, I, I can lightning round us with two <gasps> guilts. 
the general exoticism uh, of Africa in the 90s. I don't know general. if it... Yeah, it's very weird. It's a little weird and, like, probably gave us young white kids a warped view of this exotic land uh, afar. Yeah. So probably not the healthiest thing. Yeah. That's why all you guys went on mission trips Yeah, that's why every (laughs) church sent, yeah, white kids to fucking take pictures of themselves and make them feel good about themselves only to, like, 20 years later be fucking fired from their jobs. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So You You did no work on that. It's like tries to tell a colonization story a little bit. It talks about like a plane coming and crashing and they all died. I mean, it's aware of the element of that. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's. But it's it. I think it's more like showing it as like this location that can beautiful. be um, beautiful. And it is beautiful. Yes. But like you can go and find the talking adventure. monkeys all the time. adventure and all this stuff and, and a white ape and all this stuff. and it's just like no yeah. just, I mean, just... it's like a it's like a come here and don't take our shit story which is right. which is disney which is very like anti pocahontas surprisingly yeah and then it also shows it like it doesn't have one of the biggest cities <laughs> in, the, in world. the world with johannesburg yeah. Yeah, like it's it's down the street no it's all <laughs> trees it's just trees yeah it's all trees it, it's just it does jungle. write a oh bit of God. a false narrative of like africa in our media is just being i mean you, you can't write a disney story about all of africa this is just about the little jungle every time it's about the little jungle. every time it's written it's about, about the, the jungle. Imagine, it's not like i'm gonna be yeah. like we've been to the jungle several Where's times this people city are just homeward bound movie. and expect all animals to be talking. In, in fairness, this is specifically about Bakuvu, which I believe oh, is made up. Thank so. you, Zach. <laughs> oh. No, but I, I mean, like, on the flip side of that, it, it's only because Disney did that in broad strokes in general. But as a Several kid, times. of course, the, the yeah. fantasy of, like, living in that treehouse and yes. having talking monkeys, like, I fucking would have yes. eaten that shit up. I probably did. So yeah. I see it both ways. I'm just trying to give a trying to give a guilt here i mean i was like kind of like like when you're like uh oh how is this gonna go as far as just rewatching oh. with racism in mind yeah. <laughs> i was like is this gonna be racist and i feel like they i feel like in general they dodged yeah. it they what? skirted it yeah for, for a good they were like we know yeah. what you're thinking watch this and we're, to we're even go there i was like right. eh, did we need to for the sake of comedy i think pre-culture that we live in now it was allowed now I think if a movie tried to do that, they'd have to really lean in and have uh, black creators making that joke, which I'm not sure that like this was really presented as such. I mean, that's also the thing in general, like that we saw so many movies about the jungle, about Africa as a kid, but they're all about the white dude from the fucking jungle. Yeah. Like every single <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Which is- Jungle to which Jungle is, is where... about a white child in th- right. that was raised in the jungle. Right, and then as soon as you see them, you're like, "Oh, you don't belong yeah. here, sweetie." Yeah. It's just like, mm, like get yeah. the fuck out of here, man. Um, so I do have some fun facts. We're, we're way over time because we talked about Phil Collins for thirty minutes. Y'all spots. Um, this fun fact here. So it yep. said, "Did you know that George of the Jungle is the greatest movie to ever not be nominated for an Oscar?" Not no, I I that's not a How fun is fact. This is a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. Who, what is this fact site? Uh, how is that? Who just wrote that? Uh, oh, was that uh, a joke? You wrote? <laughs> it was nominated for an Oscar. It was a joke, because and I, no one bought it. I took it. I took too. I took it too. Yeah, serious. me too. I was, I was like, like, well, like, are you are you reading the IMDb trivia? Like the shit that people just make up. <laughs> the Wikipedia page. Uh, I do read the IMDb yeah. trivia. That is as far as my research goes. Um, <laughs> so one, I don't understand what this means. The ground in the jungle was made out of mashed potatoes. I don't know what, what? that means. I've read that fact several times. I don't understand how it's, po- were they walking? Well, so, in, okay. In mash- so actually, I think I know the answer to this is they use mashed potatoes as like um, foundation for making um, scenery look pretty. Sometimes, like it's really um, malleable as opposed to going to real ground and dirt. If I'm correct, I do believe that maybe they're talking about like some of the foliage and and like the trees and ground and stuff was made on top of mashed potatoes, which I think that's actually a, a like a effect trick. Like, wait, didn't his potatoes didn't didn't Ned use mashed potatoes underneath his food? His cookbook, yeah. Recently, I, I guess mashed like. Potatoes are just like cheaper and malleable, than, uh, easy to change if needed. 
And I guess, you know, eco-friendly because okay. it, it, it it's biodegradable. It's biodegradable. Um, so this is pretty fun, I think. So screenwriter Dana Olson uh, began this actually as a spec script. It was a movie called Gorilla Boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> and he intentionally shopped it to every studio except for Disney because he knew that they owned the rights to George of the Jungle and thought they wouldn't want it because it was too similar. But then they found out and they're like, actually, we don't have a script for George of the Jungle. So they bought it and evidently changed fucking You mean everything. they didn't have a script for <laughs> everybody? They lying. didn't have a script for Tarzan yet? Or what do you what did you say? No, George of the Jungle. They they had the rights for George of the Jungle but didn't have a script yet. So they oh. bought this guy's spec script, brought on new writers, and probably eradicated everything Every, about his everything movie. Everything about Because what yeah, is this course. movie without Hollywood all the Hollywood back George in the, the day the always sounds like it's like 25 people. It's like, I don't know, he's got a George of the Jungle script. I guess we should buy, you know, like it always sounds like it's like th this it's is how you decided to do George of the Jungle. You can just like find your source material, find some writers. Instead, they found this guy who was trying to shop Gorilla Boy and they were like, well, Gorilla <laughs> Boy's got to be made. Let's attach our IP <laughs> to it. Uh, yeah. it's, I mean, I don't know. Maybe Gorilla Boy was this funny, you know? Mm. Did they well, keep it, writing? It did did Dana wind up penning the final script? Is, no, is, let me see. I know other writers by. came on for sure. They got a story by. Oh, story by. Yeah. Uh, so Chris, we're at the point of the podcast where we want to know really what is your sell for why people should watch it and ultimately is this movie a pleasure a guilty pleasure or just plain guilty i would like to say that it is just a pleasure uh i think that it is goofy it is campy it is fun and i think as you go into it you don't don't look at it as any more than that fun pleasure that it is. Yes. You know, it has these cartoony fights. It has these fun scenes and fun special effects. It has the tree game maybe seven or eight times. And I'm not I don't feel guilty about even laughing at the last one. Yeah. Like I <laughs> I I don't feel guilty about laughing at any of that. The only thing I would say is that it loses a little bit of attention in the third act. But Otherwise, I think it's super fun and it's quite a pleasure. I'll jump off of that because it, it, it's exactly the moment we've talked about before. It's it's a movie you can fold your laundry to. And I went into this thinking like, oh, this is going to so be a guilty pleasure. But it was a full on pleasure. I think this is a good movie. And I think we were wrong for even trying to make this episode. Dare we even put it in that category. <gasps> Sorry, Chris. We're gonna have to throw this episode out. We're trash yeah, damn. Day. Well, we can at least <laughs> keep the stuff about our VHS bookshelves. You know. Yeah, I would love that. I would love that part so much. At risk of uh, having my friends hate me oh, forever, I feel like bitch. I gotta reset expectations a little bit. I, right. I think that there are, <laughs> there are. I wrote it down like this: there are movies that we don't like that are good. I think this is a bad movie that we love. I think that there are so many things about this movie that like are kind of yeah. wacky and broken and weird, but somehow it just all works. You know, like when, when someone's wearing exclusively patterns mismatched, you're like, whoa, 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 a lot's going on. And you know what? I fucking love yeah. it. That to me is George of the Jungle. And mm. it, it, it goes so far into guilt that it just is exclusively yeah. joy. And so that's why I'm like, yeah, it is the guiltiest movie. It is the pleasuristest movie. It is what this fucking podcast is all about. And I feel like I could have walked away and come back. I could have this plan on loop all day, every day. And it's just it's just a little bit, a little dose of happiness from your childhood. Fucking oh. Brendan Fraser is the goat. You could not come up yeah, with a perfect. single guilt five minutes ago and now you dare place it in the guilty pleasure <laughs> category fuck you zach you're trying to be I mean, controversial you're trying to make it so that not we don't all agree rick go off tell him he's wrong i mean the guilt the yeah, guilt yeah. Is that it's, it, there's one joke seven times he falls into he swings into a tree that's all we've all yeah. agreed the that guilt is works. like the entire movie but it's filled with such good moments again if you love moments where a chimpanzee reacts to something with a funny facial expression and like farts if that's not comedy yeah farts i mean look i'll funny. give it this when you find a perfect joke you hold on tight and you just repeat it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear from the professional screen TV writer who no, gets paid, no, please, no, from Hollywood, not, whose opinion matters. I, 
I would say it is it is also God a guilty it, pleasure. Rick. But yeah, I'm sorry. I, she tried to big me up. Remember when we connected to big me up before Timothy saying Chalamet? It. I take it back. Yeah. So no, come on, no. come on. We're so cool. No, so I um I think that it it yeah, it embodies perfectly what a guilty pleasure is, where it is just a a, a par movie. That you either watch one time and just like, yeah, I saw that, or <laughs> you base your entire personality around it. <laughs> What's <Like, up? laughs> No, no, no. I'm not saying that Chris <laughs> did at all. I'm not saying that at all. I mean, all. my but abs. They're, your they're just like Brandon they, Fraser. They're they're pretty popping. But no, you would watch this like you either watch it one time or you watch it a thousand yeah. times. There's no in between. Um, and it feels like, um, like from like a a screenwriter perspective it feels like watching someone fall down an infinite amount of <laughs> yes. stairs to where it's just like and they and they keep on falling but they're not like they're they're not like hurting themselves they're just like stumbling down the stairs the whole time and you're just like damn are you gonna stop this is chaos this is just impressive at the end of the day yeah. like like the fact that you keep on staying on your feet and you're not like dead by yes. now you know like so i I would have to call it a guilty pleasure because there are fault, there are guilts, there are faults in like, you know, the second act just kind of comes out of nowhere. Like his transition to San Francisco comes out of nowhere. I'm just like, all right, so he gets shot in the head and then she's like, I'm gonna take you on a private jet, not to the hospital. To get, we're out to of time, C-Bow aren't we? People. We must be out of time. Oh, yeah, yeah, we are. There's I'm no sorry. Way. You, you know what it is? You know what it is? But it's, it's the yeah. perfect VHS shelf movie. It was it is. one of it one really of ten is. that you owned, and you popped that sucker in again and again. Yep. Right. So it I is. mean, congratulations, Santa Maria Rotary, for giving my dad the <laughs> ultimate Christmas gift. <laughs> you nailed it, <laughs> Chris. Before we let you go, you have an incredible podcast. You just celebrated one hundred episodes. You have beep, beep, great beep. guests on beep, that show. Yeah. Yeah, we have Kel- Kelsey, Zach, Garrick, future guest. Zach has been yeah. on the show. Kelsey's Kelsey's been on the show. Uh, one one of them aired. Uh, oh, one yeah. of them did it. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> because we get drunk and high on the show, uh, oftentimes with celebrity guests. And uh, Kelsey, uh, the first time she did the show. Um, it was the last day I ever is- drank. It was the last day she ever drank, and that gives wow. you an idea that of how just wild. Tell you why it that was show unairable. was. Well, I was glad to be the first unaired episode. <laughs> but yeah, it's called Wine and Weed. It's with uh, my friend Sterling Stilo Brim, who you might know from Ridiculousness on MTV. Uh, but he's also a super funny, smart dude. Outside of just commenting on people getting hit in the nuts. Uh, next to Rob Deerdeck. Uh, and so we have a lot of conversations about the world, about politics, about pop culture, uh, and we have some great guests. Uh, so yeah, go check it out, youtube.com slash wine and weed or wine and weed wherever you get your podcasts. Anyway, you go, what, wrap it up, Zach. I'm at Corn Diddy on the things. I, Please tell your friends, rate the show. I'm Kelsey Dara on all the things and... I'm Garrick Bernard on all of this. Yes, things. you are, you oh, beautiful you know what? bitch. Join us next week. Our good buddy Jarvis Johnson is going to join us to watch High School Musical. We'll see you then. Thanks so much, Chris. We love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.